Hello, welcome to the Promised Land, a show about <laughs> Manchester United. I'm part of the Nighty Min Podcast Network. Uh, I'm Scott, you'd have to pretend. Don't, don't, still, don't getting you... my, still getting my breath back after that. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I tell you what, Rob, that was, uh, that'll be remembered for, that, like, in 20 years. Forever. I th- Forever. That in in yes. 20 years, when you go back and you see a video of that, those moments in that game, how crazy it was. Um, I I mean, I saw a tweet from some account that I, I quote tweeted, oh, even if United win this game, uh, they're just tactically flawed. It'll mean nothing. <laughs> Shut up, honestly. Hi, Rob. Yeah, I'm sure you? Liverpool fans are thinking that today. Oh, that Manchester United, they're very tactically flawed today, aren't they? Well, mm, they were a bit tactically flawed as well, weren't they? They were indeed. We're here. Man United have beaten Liverpool 4-3 after extra time. In the FA Cup, they play Coventry City in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. Mark Robbins. In... Yes, very much so. Ahmad Diallo picking up that role potentially <laughs> will he go on to be commentary manager in 40 years time we will wait and see who knows uh <laughs> but yeah we're back to do a live reaction to that whatever that was um rob you, you haven't really talked yet go on oh i haven't talked yet i'm gonna do a lot of talking on i um yeah it's it's a strange one isn't it because you do you, you go through the whole range of emotions in a game like this because it's so mad from starting the game and getting the lead and then throwing the lead away and then equalizing just before the end of the match and then extra time and all of that and you somehow win it and you know quite often asked scott why do we do this why do we do this whole football lark because of this this is why we do it and these are the memories you create you know with your kids and with family and whatnot through your life with, with friends and these build up, like we just said there at the top of the show, where how long will this will be remembered? Until the day we die, beating Liverpool 4 3, we will remember this forever because this is what these. Games it was are one about. of those. It was one of those for me. It, it really was. Yeah. And, and Liverpool fans will remember beating us 5 0 at Old Trafford 5 1 or them like thrashing us by seven at, at, at Anfield. And they will remember those games for the same reasons that. This dysfunctional Man United team with no tactics and no purpose half the time went and played like they wanted it and won 4-3 against a team that wants to win the Premier League. So it's just wild. It's a wild game of football. Football is wild on itself. But just looking at how United turned the screw on that and actually won the game, Scott, just it's just madness, isn't it? Like Even Marcus getting his goal... But like missing those two big chances either side. Do you know what I mean? And it's like he was offside for both of them. I, I think he was. Thank oh. God, <laughs> he was. Uh, I'm sure he will be glad that that's the case. Absolutely. But he took that, that opportunity there. Scott rolls it through and and he takes it beautifully. It's as good as finish as you'll see. So you've got this game had everything. It had the best of everything and the worst of everything. And it's so. It's impossible to break it down. That's not what we're going to try and do today. Like We're going to just talk about the game, obviously, with a little bit of a salient mindset as well and you know, a bit of realism. But at the same time, don't get too high, don't get too low. Everyone knows that catchphrase here on this show. But you can get high when you win 4-3 in that manner. It's an absolutely amazing moment, Scott. And to be able to beat this Liverpool team like that, the final minute of the game with a young kid running through from his own goal, 70, 80 yards with getting the ball from another young kid, sliding him in, putting it in the bottom corner. Amazing. Just I'll tell you what, Garnacho's engine. Good grief. And, and he was dead by the time that happened. Like, did you see, like 10 minutes before, mm. he was like, but that's what you got to do, isn't it? When you're playing football, 120 minutes of football, you have got to keep going. There is no, there is no need to say, oh, I, I need a rest because you're going to get a rest afterwards. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> keep running if you can. And, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that today, about some of United, United's fatigue factors and some of that in this game, how it influenced the, the match. But overall, Scott, you know, you can't say to these boys, want it or not? Of course they want it. It's just they've got to find a way of winning matches a little bit more easier than, than how they did it today. But that's what the FA Cup is all about. Right. Okay, this is a live uh, reaction 
Uh, we'll release this as an audio podcast later on on Apple, Spotify, etc. as well. If you're catching up, I'm just going to... So, yeah, get your comments in as we go. I'm just going to pick some out as we go. Cyber Recluse says, it was my birthday today. Fantastic gift. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. And that was an all-time epic. That was. It really was. Uh, Christopher Walking says... I'm not showing his metal today when the lights were brightest. He rose up and shone. He really did. Even winning the ball on the edge of the box from Harvey Elliott. Mm. You know, I said, I, I shouted because I completely lost my head today. Uh, get it. Get like, I was doing that all day. And he got his studs in there or got his foot in there. And like you say, Garnacho and him. Was it Connor Bradley they were running at? Yeah. You know, it couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Uh, and he's been asking for chances for a, for a long time, hasn't he, this kid? And uh, now he can't play United's next game because he got sent off. He uh, deserves a holiday. Mm, Have yeah, a day he really off. Does. <laughs> uh, United draw Coventry in the next round. Fantastic. Mm. Bernardo's, Bernardo Bernard, or Bernard says, uh, still cannot believe the result. One of our best games of the season. Kingy says, looking forward to Rob's analysis of Bruno, the centre-back. Maybe we'll oh, get to uh, that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about Bruno today, definitely. Yeah. Right, there's a lot of comments here for guys. I can't. I don't know if I can get through all of them. Mason Mount is alive, says Elite Baller. Uh, he's missing the Brentford game. Yes, he is, Zakir. He's, uh, he's our lucky, a lucky charm, Mason Mount. Came game. on a pitch. Yes. Uh, we might have Lisandro Martinez back for the next game as well. Fantastic news. Great day all round. It wasn't... <laughs> there was a, a period after about 30 minutes until about the end of the game where I think everything was all awful. Um, but, you know, that was what we did see today. And regardless of what you think of some of the players, regardless of what you think of the tactics, this kind of thing, they are... They played for that today and they really mm. wanted it. And... I think the leveler was that Liverpool eventually ran out of energy as well, and that made it an eff effectively an even game. Mm. They ran out of energy. They started making some poor decisions. They couldn't track as much as they were previously. <sighs> we'll get into it. We'll break it down. But subscribe. If, you, if you're new here, we've got over 100 watching live. Subscribe, if you haven't already, wherever you get your podcast to The Promised Land. We're on Apple and Spotify and also on YouTube as well. So if you're watching us on YouTube currently, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, share the video, tell your friends, etc., etc. Leave a comment as well. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a show. And Rob and I are also on social media at double underscore Scott Saunders on X Instagram and TikTok at underscore Rob underscore B on X on YouTube and at TPL MUFC on X. And uh, the the thing that we try and do usually is uh, be a little bit more measured, less emotional, um, not not viral. I mean, <laughs> is that the way to put it? Not over the top. Um, but I tell you not what, overly clickbaity. Yeah, that's the way to put that's, it. That's the kind of way to way to put it. A little bit more measured, not too high, not too mm. low. <sighs> today, I, that, they got me today. They really did. They got me too. And, you know, it's, it's hard doing these shows. Like, I mean, I've done a million post match shows over the years and with the masterclass and whatnot. And, and, and you, you don't come on here to kind of explain a lot of that, but there's so much detail. Like, we, we could do a four hour in detail show about a 90 minute football match and about what Manchester United are and what they could be, Scott. Like, again, you, you see today that there is heart somewhere in this football club. It is there. It's just how do you get it out? It's how do you how do you make sure it's there all the time? And even in this match, Scott, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you're the best team on the football pitch by a long way. Yeah, first 30 minutes. And then you just give a couple of goals away. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? You know, so that feels such a long time ago now. <laughs> where we went. But, Rob, have they ever recovered from that? Like, have, have they ever, you, you know, like what they, we've, we've criticised them lots for yeah. shipping goals in quick succession, right? Have they ever recovered in the manner they did today and won off the back of that? Well, not, not that you can manager. remember. Not under this manager, definitely not. Like I, I think I, I don't want to completely directly compare it, but I'm going to make the comparison, especially as we've got Coventry in the next round and it's Mark Robbins. Yeah, is that all those many years ago? We have spoken about that moment at Nottingham Forest where Fergie got his one nil win. It wasn't like this. It was a terrible game. It was very wet, boring game of football. You win one nil. 
But to me and to young Rob, I still remember that moment as being pivotal, that, that life changed that day. Now, I'm not saying that's how this is, but this is how it could be because you won this game for free. And I think if you get beaten, Scott, and say you really lose this game at one point when you're hemorrhaging, when the blood's flowing and it's it's nasty and you've got your chin out and Liverpool just swinging away and you're thinking this could be anything at this moment. They just hung in, didn't they? They hung in. And even the substitutes were like, yeah, a bit like damp squib, nothing there, like thinking, oh, well, you really haven't got a lot of choice. You're going to bring on some kids. They've got to do a little bit more running. Like you just said there, Bruno Fernandes playing as like the centre-back for the last X amount of the game because he was injured. Yeah, and Marcus, who again, I think you could be cr highly critical of Marcus Rashford today besides his goal. <laughs> some of his work today really was bad. But there's no need for that at this moment of time because obviously we're feeling all so high about what the actual result was and, and who you just beat. And you can't, you can't discount that either. Is that Jurgen Klopp will never play another FA Cup game again because of this. And it means something. It does. And people will remember it. And that's just what it is. Now, Liverpool might go on and win the league. They might not care at the end of the day, Scott. But for a team like Man United that suffered, I think, in the last year and longer, it does mean something because these small glories are actually bigger than they are. And we will remember them as magic moments like we have over many, many years gone by. Ethan says up there with the PSG match for post Fergie moments. I think that's that's fantastic shout out that one. Um, Definitely up there. That's why I said it's for this fact, manager because I yeah. think I think Ole had a few. Yeah, uh, I was just trying to think now. Maybe no, I, I don't think anything's come close to me since that. For me, it's certainly United Be Liverpool honest. as well. Like one matters overhead kick. I remember Anfield was like a <gasps> moment. But you know, we won that game. I had a power cut that day. It was terrible. And it went just <laughs> after that. And then I had to watch a blank screen for an hour or something. But you, you've got that game. And do you know what I also remember as well? Again, being old, 1987, I think it was. We were 2-1 down at home to Liverpool. John Barnes had just scored. I think Peter Beardsley scored. And we scored two goals in the last 10 minutes. Russell Beardsmore scored the third goal. Russell Beardsmore is a name. And we beat them 3-2 that day. And that was when Liverpool were the gods of the world and Manchester United were nobodies. So. There are these moments that go back over time, but I do think for Eric Ten Hag, he needed this, Scott. Like, my God, he needed oh, this. Oh, absolutely. If you lost absolutely. this game in, say, before extra time or even in extra time, but say you lose, say you lose it 3 2 after extra time, um, there would be a, a big inquest today or tomorrow, I should say, about what went wrong. And there are still a lot of things really not great. Tactically, Scott, today, some of the tactics are just, they're, they're kind of mad. United playing like, with one centre-back and, like, nine forwards. It's like, what are you doing? But you had to do that in the end, didn't you? In the last 10 minutes, when you get it back to to three all, credit to United, they went for it. And you said that breakaway, and you got two young lads running towards that goal. It, it oof, just, just something that will be remembered for forevermore by United fans. Strongman Steve, hello again, says, to beat Liverpool over two hours of football is a massive effort. I honestly wasn't expecting that fair play to them today. Yeah. Bailey says, honestly, this match gives me more hope about the manager than anything in the past. This team has a long way to go, but the building blocks are there. Now it's so, time so. to do it again for the rest One of the game. season. So, so okay. That's why right. I make the Mark Robbins comparison to, to 1990, because that was the same thing. of winning And winning that FA Cup, changed the view on Fergie. Like people thought Fergie was regressive and boring and dour and rubbish and not good enough for Man United. He wins that FA Cup and it does change everything like in, in a matter of a year. Now, you'd want United to springboard off this, wouldn't you, Scott? You know, 4-3 against Liverpool, against the Scousers, amazing victory. And now it's up to them to springboard. So it's up to them to take this, bottle it and move it on and, and actually show that they want this because you still can... You still can ask questions about some of the commitment, but I just think, like, I don't know what you think, Scott. Like, they're having to run so much. Like, <laughs> I'm knackered watching them. <laughs> you know what I mean, first half an hour, I'm not surprised that they're fatigued and that's affecting performances. So, Eric's yeah. got a big chance here. He's got a big chance to kind of turn some of the narrative here because the narrative is still not fantastic. I don't think the high press, low line is a thing that we're going to be seeing long term. Oh. I don't think it is, and obviously there's a there's been a, a, an image today of some. Yeah, I posted it. Was it, it, yeah. was it Sober's lie, Was it or breaking through the field? That that was the time because that press was yeah. awful, and I haven't tweeted about it. But 
that was the moment the energy dropped. The it, press like, was terrible. It was terrible. Like it was, they it was a one man midfield. It, it, Kobe it, Manu. It, yeah, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> They walk through it and then we're back yeah. on the back four. And you, you're watching the back four. All they can all they can do in that situation is actually go backwards. That's right, what they, they can do. Yeah. Um, but why didn't that happen in the first 30 minutes? I, I don't know. And this is why, like, as I said, if, if this was a normal game of football and we were talking about this in a normal sense, it would be different because it's just odd still to me that you go one nil up, you control the game for 30 minutes, you're the better team for 30 minutes. And you still just go, well, we're just going to carry on doing this. It's like, I don't know a serious team that does that. I really don't. You control games by looking at tempo. And it was weird being 2-1 down and being feeling negative at halftime. Because for the first chunk, you've done well. But I felt, I was furious at halftime, Scott. I was like, this is just the same tactics all the time. Just give the midfield away and people kind of doing this little jog. The goal, Marcus Rashford for the first goal, you know, he just lets the player run through him and they're in your box and you're like, oh, they might score now. Oh, they have. Bruno for the second goal. Oh, I get a touch. I'm going to fall over, roll over. They're in your box again. It's a goal. You're like, see this every week. It's the same stuff every week. I don't get it. What? When are they going to realise to not do this stuff? So I think some of it is personnel. Scott, I think you've said that before. I think some of it is tactics. There's this big mix of stuff still happening but second half and also in extra time they wanted it and they went out there and they went and traded blows with this Liverpool team and as you said Liverpool I think they ran out of gas right at the very end you could just see even with their substitutes they I think United with the third goal with when it went to 3-3 it like sucked the soul out of Liverpool 3-3 sucked the soul out of them and Liverpool were like ooh and they tried to obviously win the game at the end but United get that counter attack from the edge of your own box that's classic, isn't it? 70 yard sprint to goal and putting it in the bottom corner, Scott. He could only put it there to score. It wasn't going in anywhere else, was it? It was a really, really good finish. <clears throat> right. Let's see. Get your comments in, everyone. Watching. There's lots, lots of, of comments, comments here. There's loads of comments. Phil C, let's not kid ourselves. If Liverpool took any of their huge chances when we were wide open, we'd been well beaten. We weren't great. Just a feel good win, which we must use to build. United had loads of chances as well, mind. They could, they should have been 2 0 up. That that McTominay chance. Hmm. Both teams had a lot of chances today, and obviously yeah. Liverpool had their chance to win. United had their chances to win, and it kind of went back and forth, didn't it? It was a it was a proper slugfest, like totally. Uh, it's like a it basketball. Was, it, was game. M- it was basketball, wasn't it? It was it's an NBA game, yeah. but it was fun. Good God, was it fun? Like I I, I thought it was. There, obviously, there were times in the middle of the game where you kind of thought, "Oh, this is just going the way that it's always gone." Not good uh, for my dicky heart, mm. Scott. Like, 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 I, I, I still do like a bit more control, <laughs> but in these games, you, you take it, don't you? Because you're all already on the floor because you think you've lost. That's that's the magic here. And again, another comparison I will make is again felt a little bit like that night in Barcelona against Bayern Munich, where you've been pummeled for most of the game and you're losing one nil, but you're still just in it somehow. And and I felt that today again. I thought. You're somehow at 2-1, you're losing, but you're still in it somehow because it's a cup game. Get it to extra time. Can you then go the next mile? They did all of that. It was fun, Scott. Like In in hindsight, we can say it's fun, but I think that comment's pretty spot on as well because even though United have had lots of chances, they have had that, Scott, in the weeks gone by. They've had loads of chances and we kind of go, oh, United have had eight chances, but they're giving away another, another eight. <laughs> You know, and Everton come last week and get 22 shots. It shouldn't happen. Really shouldn't still. Um, and this is what you know, the Rubik's Cube that Eric Ten Hag has to solve. I think to stay in this job still is to kind of prove to Ineos. You saw today, Jay Brailsford was there with, you know, with bells and whistles on. He's got to prove that this team could be tactically better than it was today because you're not going to beat everyone four for every week. You're just not. These, this is a special moment, a cup match. And it will be remembered forever. Michael says, I'm sorry, but some games demand no negativity. Yeah, Rob. I'm not being negative. No, 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 no. I'm I'm, I'm totally... Talking about about the midfield. I'm I'm trying to give some context to it. I think it's all part of a wider... I think they're teething problems, personally. I've I've said it for a long time. I think they're teething problems. I think it's down to personnel. Um, Robbie says, lads, I hope the podcast's going well because you're by far the best United content creators out there. I've been listening since the start. An absolute you credit to you both on how good your content is. Thank you very much, Robbie. Uh, that really You've got a really good name there, Robbie, as well. Great name. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to Maria. What a great St. Patrick's Day you are seeing in the chat. Well, oh, guys, there's so many comments, honestly. But um, shout out Harry Maguire as well. Phil has given him a shout out. But right, we, 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 like, well, we're, we're, we're just winging it. We, we're winging this, right? This yeah, is what no we generally today, do. There's no agenda. We're just going to talk about the game itself. And I don't want to mm. like tread on old ground. Maybe this... Um, do you want to go chronologically? Do you want to talk about players? What do you minute want to by do? minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do. I think chronologically is the best way to approach this because it did that. Twenty two minutes hours, in, we've, we've done half of it already. <laughs> yeah, that two hours of life felt like eight hours to me. <laughs> really, really did. There's so many conflicting emotions. Um, but yeah, we we'll go early. Scott, what did you think at the start of the game? Well, Eric Ten Hag in his post match called it the best fifteen minutes or the best half an hour of our season. Or well, the best period of our season. And I think yeah. it was. What I think happened was they came in with drive and intensity mm. and desire. And it was better than Liverpool's in the early stages. Yeah. And that's why they created as much as they created. That's why they took the lead. Obviously, they gave their own chances up as well. But that is why United were the better period for the first 30 minutes better team for the first 30 minutes mm. got the goal could have probably got another one but what i think happened was they they blew out mm. and usually i'll i'll criticize players for not tracking back and having commitment issues with commitment and stuff like that but i've seen like to to me i just think yeah they do run a lot but you know they should be fitter than they are I, I just think I, mm. I just think that's the thing. I, I don't think United are as fit as other teams. And that is why they gas out. Remember when Ralph Ranick came in? That, 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 this is a comparison that I, I was thinking of in my head. The first 30 minutes against Crystal Palace was cohesive. It was it was good mm -hmm. in his first game. And we didn't never seen it ever again. We nope. never saw it again. No. Nope. A lot of the same players play. Yeah. You know? And I think. Well, Ten Hag's getting criticised now because Casemiro's pulled up with an injury, like he's working them too hard and training, this kind of thing. But to be honest, I think, and I said it a few weeks ago, I feel like if you stick with it and you get the right personnel in, players who are a bit less prone to injury, I feel like this is these are teething problems. And this is why I've been defensive of Ten Hag for a while. I feel like the... The fall off in intensity is what led to that thing that will get memed, that, that has already got memed, that that massive chasm of space in the midfield. Mm. It's your defense can push up, or your press works, or you, they all they all press together, and it doesn't happen, you know. But you you have a case where you have got Rafa Varane and bloody Victor Lindelof, who are not really front foot defenders like Martinez. They, their first instinct is to go backwards. So, you know, I think. Ten Hag, well, Ten Hag needed that win today. He needed it, right? If he'd have lost that game, he probably wouldn't have ever got a chance to see it through. And yeah, yeah, that that's uh, that was a summary of the first thirty minutes for me. Anyway, I think again, this is uh, I'm not trying to create a bit of heat between me and Scott here or anything like that. But I think again, teething problems is a polite way of putting a lot of this because I mean. Oh, but you know what you know what I'm saying with teething. Problems. I, I know where you're coming from, and you're coming also from. Uh, a sympathetic view of Ten Hag and all of this as well. I'm not saying that I'm not sympathetic. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that I think when I look at a lot of these tactics every single week, I am as confused as the players look half the time. <laughs> so like even today, you're right. First 30 minutes, lots of desire, really good systematic uh, control like of what Liverpool were trying to do. You were doing the right things. You were running in the right areas. And I think, you know, it got to about 35 minutes, around that 40 minutes, and they gassed, as you said. And I, I can't believe that still in 2024, that when you look at how teams perform behind the scenes in their training grounds with all the sports science there, that you have a massive, like, disparaging difference between squad to squad to squad. Because when you compare the numbers, most squads are as fit as each other across the board. Like, as you get to it, some squads are more athletic. That's a thing you know, bigger players, faster players, that all matters. I cannot believe that Eric Ten Hag, who is a disciplinarian, isn't getting his team fit. I don't believe that. I can't believe that he's going in and going, you boys are not running. I want to make you run more. Now, you said about Casemiro there. That was broken, obviously, today. Certain journalists said, oh, you know, 
well, Casemiro's been asked to do too much running, so he's got injured. I don't believe that either. I just think Casemiro can't do what you want him to do overall. So it doesn't matter that's what my point, Casemiro... though. That's my, that's my yeah. point, though. I think there's too but, many of those players. So there's there's too many of those players, and that's I think you can look at that individually as you go along. We still have got to realise that a lot of this squad have been bought by Eric Ten Hag, and yet there is existing players that also have been here a while. But every manager is tasked to do the same thing, Scott. And that is that you have got to find tactics to blend it all to make it work. And I look at United, and I think this is my biggest criticism of Eric, and this is not to try and make the show negative or anything like that. It's just that if you want to play this kind of mad version of counter-press, yeah, you're going to run into Fulham's and they'll beat you. Yeah, and you'll and you'll give twenty two chances away to Everton, and you'll get a day like today, Scott. Where it they're works. not chances, they're shots, Rob. Shots on goal. What against us? You talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're so, not chances. They're shots. They're shots, but they're still they're still they're still you're giving chances away, aren't you? That's the whole thing. It's like shots on goal. You know, it's a chance for them to score. So you're giving these shots away, and you have to find ways to stop it. And yes, if you go by better players, probably stop a lot of them. It's the truth. Yeah, you're, you're, it's fine. But it, there will be a tactical element here where, as we say, Dan Ashworth, who we'll talk about more of in the weeks to come, will be looking at some of the technical aspects of this, Scott, and he won't like a lot of it. He'll be like, okay, it's cool we won 4 free, but what, what are you lot doing in, in some of the press? You cannot leave a midfield 80 yards open. You can't box to box. We can joke about it because we won. But if you'd lost this game, we wouldn't be joking about it. So I, I think the thing is, is that we don't need to reflect too heavily on that today, like as fans or, or as journalists or anything like that, because it's a great day and United have won. But only till the next game, because <laughs> we'll probably see a lot of it again, you see, won't we? And you, you need to kind of deal and cope with it. I think for the first 30 minutes, Scott, I agree, probably the best we played this season really was in terms of control. And I'd love to see United stretch those 30 minute periods out to an hour and then maybe even longer. We haven't seen that this year. Nothing like that. Maybe the answer is to play some more kids in there. Like, you know, two or three of your kids did well today. I thought Cobby was really good again in the midfield. He's kind of on his own dribbling through. Did you see for one of those opportunities where he kind of beats four players and gets you into the box? Jordan of the Henderson of Ajax has been called up ahead of Cobby Moon to the England squad. Well, that's, that's on Gareth, isn't it? So that's on Mr. Southgate. So it is what it I is. Think I, saw, I think I saw Jamie Carragher. Did a, it was either Jamie Carragher or Jamie Redknapp or somebody did a column of England mm. need a number six who can pass the ball and dribble. And got one. But they don't and the funny one. thing today was Cobby was playing as the six. Like Cobby yeah. was the six and he was in the eight and the ten and he was in the box and he was in the other box. And you're like, this boy's having to do so much. And being honest, Scott, it's too much. Like an eighteen-year-old shouldn't be being asked to do all of this, but you know it's midfield. Like the the, the the actual combination between Manu, Bruno, and and McTominay, by and large, didn't work. Like you win the game later on because you just go rogue and it's just like let's attack, <laughs> let's go, let's go proper Man United attack, 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 and you, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can win the game, and you do, and it's it's an amazing moment. Um, I don't know. They go on the training ground, Scott in a couple of days time and go, all right, let's just take some of this and bottle it and use it for the next game because it's so wild. Bruno Fernandes is like your quarterback at the back there on his own and the ball is being sprayed long and you've got Harry Maguire up top, like jumping up and trying to nod the ball down to people and you're like, this is really desperate. I read a few people, a few journalists right there and saying, it's just chaos. That's the problem is that chaos can win you a game of football. But most weeks, it might lose you them. So I don't think it's teething problem, Scott. I'm not going to use that word. I think it's too polite. I think it needs to be more acute. And I think this manager needs to find a way between now and the end of the season to keep his job, to, to have tactics that work, even though I know he's trying to play this kind of hella high water style of football, which is exciting when it works. But unfortunately, this season, it's not worked as many times as it's failed. How many games have United lost this year? Um, 16 in all competitions. No, th this <laughs> since the turn of the year. Oh, no, one, I think. Two. One or two? Two. Two, two I think it is. Yeah, two out um, about... Fulham. 12. And what's the other one? City. Fulham. City. Yeah, so City's acceptable, isn't it? Like, we're, we're nowhere near as good as them. Um, so, yeah, since, since Christmas... So he's winning. I, My point is he's winning. I think what it is is that Generally. he's had his players coming back, so that does matter. Like when you with the injuries, and and it's still he's still coping without his first choice centre backs, his first choice left back. 
Hoyland comes back today. I think Hoyland like ran the channel better in terms of you know making it work. Anthony's kind of been out of the picture and comes back in today and gives you a tiny little bit of value, especially with his goal. Though I don't think he actually played great, but he did his job. So well done there, Anthony. But so as you get players coming back, Mason Mount's now coming back. Maybe we will see some development. Maybe then we will go oh, at the end of the season. This was just an injury thing. It was the injuries that made the difference. But I just think some of the tactics, Scott, are, are, are still a little bit brittle. Like, I don't really know the players understand them because they quite often switch off in games. And you just kind of go, well, I don't believe they don't care. It's just, I just don't know. So from 30 minutes to 45, felt totally different from zero to 30 today. Don't you agree? Like, first 30. Oh, no, they did. But I, felt, I think felt they were... Great. Yeah, and no, I, I like I completely get it. Like I, th I feel like they are being asked to run a little bit more than well, a lot more than they're capable of. Yeah. And I think the fact that they ran so hard in the first thirty minutes or so is probably what ended up with Liverpool being the better team for from about thirty to eighty five, mm. really, th or thirty to ninety even. Because when when Anthony scored, it was uh, you know. 88 minutes ish or whatever it was and United mm. weren't really on top then it was just more swinging a punch wasn't it but yeah United did get back did United the the playing field was leveled during extra time I think when Harvey Elliott scored and the, they scored two deflected goals as well when Harvey Elliott scored I think that was just Liverpool weren't particularly better United weren't particularly better at that point it was just uh you know two teams going for it and it just so happened that El Elliott had a lot of space probably because everybody was knackered on the pitch totally. and there was a deflection. I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I will, I'm not going to hang players out to dry for that, to be honest. I mean, no, not in extra time as well. Like extra time yeah. it's hard to go from minute 90 to 120 and still show like that level of desire, like where you've got to close people down. And, and I think that's the only time when it is, you can almost say, yeah, that is okay. It's not okay from minute 30 to 45 because footballers should be able to run in those moments. They should still, but it's. I think they're being asked to play such an aggressive style of football, Scott, and then a high tempo style of football that that they then they have these moments where they clock off, and it definitely hurts United. Like that's what the opponents look at that and and make make hay in those moments against United. I think Fulham was a really good example of that game where Fulham just kind of turned the screw on us out of nothing. Smashed Tottenham think. yesterday, by the way. Yeah, Fulham. What well, Tottenham? The best team in the world. Tottenham. You, you, you love it. You, you love a bit of I saw the result and thought of you. Yesterday. I thought of you when I saw that result. I thought, oh, Scott, Scott, we're going, oh, Ange, Spurs. <laughs> but, um, but it shows, doesn't it? Because I think Spurs are a little bit like United, but maybe further developed in their attacking mindset. Is that Spurs always score goals, but in that game, they didn't, did they? And guess what? You got hammered because you're not good enough on those moments with the ball. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I think uh, extra time was a bit of an, an anomaly. Really, it was just going to be who gets a knockout punch, and yeah. and somehow United really. I, I didn't feel good in those final moments, but I think when it went back to three all, I was like, you got a chance again. You've really got a chance if you get that one chance. Bit of luck, breakaway luck. That's what it was. I see there's a comment there saying, oh, Rob being, uh, always being uh, negative about Eric Ten Hag. I'm really not. I'm just trying to actually add some balance to some of the tactics and the way maybe his bosses will be looking at it. Because as good as we feel tonight, there will still be other conversations about, you know, what happened today and what's been going on for the last few weeks. So I'm just trying to inject some of that into the conversation without it being overly serious. My new football club says, great pod this Always look forward to new episodes. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Nini says, guys, hit the like button. I act actually haven't said Please. that yet. Please do that. Um, please do that because we would like the channel to grow and like more people to watch it to try and bring some relative calmness to when Man United lose <laughs> games or, or in this case, win matches. It's a little bit more difficult to do that today. But, you know, Try not to go over the top too much. Try and have a little bit more of a measured take on what's happening on in the United sphere, this kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, please like the stream if you haven't done that already and you can subscribe to the channel as well. We'll be going probably for another 20 minutes or so, I would think. Um, right. Okay. Uh, let's not talk about too much the whole minute 30 to minute eighty six or whatever it was no. let's um let's focus on the positives we can talk about players in a second but i think let's just let's focus on the attitude because yeah. that was 
I didn't think I did not think United had it in them. I, I really no. didn't. I said uh, at one point I tweeted dead and buried because I thought they were. Uh, I mm. thought they they give up another goal because that's what they tend to do in those situations. If they can they ship two goals in quick succession against a team like Liverpool. They lost seven nil last season at Anfield. Mm. For God's sake, like seven nil. Um, what did anything change today? What was different? Why did it, why did that happen? I, do you know, I don't think anything specifically changed because, again, we accuse players, don't we, of, of being not caring, not wanting it, don't want to play for the badge. We, we say all that kind of cliche stuff a fair bit when we kind of feel like that, when we see poor performances. I think the difference was in this game, Scott, is that it's sometimes it's about momentum and the goals and where, where the goal comes from in that moment. Because let's be honest, when Anthony gets that goal and makes it 2 all, like, did, did you see it coming? I didn't. I didn't feel it coming. It wasn't like, yeah, we're, we're turning the screw in, we're pushing and pushing. That ball breaks in the box. And credit to Anthony, on his wrong foot, he has got a right foot there. You see it. He spins. Um, he haven't both his goals been right foot goals this season? Yeah, this season. And, uh, you know, it shows he can <laughs> actually, when he's in the middle of the goal there, he, when he's forced to use his right foot. He's one he of can... the top scorers in the FA Cup. He's got two. <laughs> there you go. And I think that's it. that means his goal involvement this year for Man United in the last season has been two, I think. So, or three maybe now overall. Um, so a, a good moment for him as well, Scott, because I think when you talk about individuals, it's good for him that he's got that goal in that moment. He can share in all this because I think for him, he's a confidence player. And I, and I think his confidence has just ebbed away over time. And that's why we've not seen anything resembling performances. But that, I think the player then, we, t we spoke about him at the, at the top of the show. Also, I spoke about Kobe is that I think Garnacho is like both Garnacho, Hoyland and uh, Kobe. Their maturity levels, I think, are kind of what drag United along quite often. Now, they're, they're still young lads, and we shouldn't think of it like that. But when you're still looking at the senior players who have maybe not got that maturity, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I don't, I can't understand why people in their mid-20s or late-20s, you look at these 18, 19, 20-year-olds, and there's something about them, I don't know what it is. And I think like Garnacho, as you said, still running in that last minute of the game. That's... That's something up here, something elite mentality there to be able to do that. And I think we've seen that from these boys a lot. Even in games where United have lost, these boys have pushed themselves to the limit. We said, didn't we, as well, the other week, oh, let, let's hope they don't get ruined by the Man United bug, you know, because that, that happens to everyone at Man United. I don't think it will. I don't think, I think these boys are different. I think they're cut from a different cloth. I think they're just like, we want to be the best and we've come through youth systems and we've been taught to be like this. And this is what we're going to do. Whether Giza next to me is doing it, I'm going to play my game. I think you see Copy, Copy do that in midfield all the time today. He ran that midfield on his own, Scott. It was him versus Liverpool in mid some, some phases of play. And it's, it's too much for him. But you can see the mentality. He's like, I'm doing my job. That's what I'm here for. So that was, I think, the difference is that you've still you've got these young players who are coming in. Ahmad, in the last, you know, at the end of the game. You've got to have something up here to do that. You can't just do it. It's not luck. You have to have something in your brain where you see the picture. And I think Ahmed is that kind of player. He sees what he wants to do. And in that moment, he just said, I don't know if you saw the interview, but he said, you know, when I got the ball, my first instinct was to give it back to Garnacho. He was like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give it back to him. He said, but when, when it opened up and I went to my left, he said, I just knew how to shoot. I knew how to put it away. And he did. And that's it. And that's forevermore there for you. Um, Amad, that's remembered forevermore. So that's, I think, how you build this squad, Scott, is you've got to weed out all the little mentalities that don't work, whether they're on a lot of money or, you know, you said about Casemiro there. Maybe it's time to move a few on and you start bringing players in. And, and for Eric Ten Hag, I know that's what he wants. We know that's what he wants. It's just that whether he can get that far down the line now by making sure United's results kind of hold together now in the next few months. You're on a mute. <laughs> mute. You're still on mute. Scott's still on mute. I don't know what's going on there. It looks like I'm going to have to talk because he's muted his microphone. It's broken. So I don't know. What else should I talk about? All right. Go and, it's the Rob show then suddenly now. So oh, my back. You're back. Yes, Scott. What the hell is happening? I, I just know. turned my microphone off on accident. I know. Um, you did. Yeah, you turned it off right. and went to sleep, anyway. I think. I, I wanted I wanted to make a point, And I was going to say, the sound isn't muted on my screen. It's on my bloody microphone. That's anyway. cool. 
Um, and I must have touched it's it. Live. It's live. Live. Touched the, the mute button on accident. The contracts, the contracts. So honestly, mm. I've been talking about this for so long. How can you give players contracts that are so far beyond your status as a club? I know you United are one of the biggest clubs in the world, but you you you're literally the sixth best sixth best team in the league currently. Yeah. At best. At yeah. best, you know. And, and maybe cosplaying playing can... at your bigger team. You mm. you kind of like going maybe you can climb the table. Mm. But there's common themes with me well Ahmad's pr- not on huge money but common themes with the contracts that they've put on uh Hoyland Garnacho and Cobby they're not earning money that is way way beyond their status no like some it's not about are. money at that moment it, and it's not no. whereas some players in there see United I've seen United in the past and I'm not I don't want to like name names here but if you're gonna get two fifty a week, three hundred grand a week, name names. You're Scott. set. You're name set. names, Scott. I'm not, I'm not gonna name names. I can't. I can't think of. I can't think of specifics <laughs> at the moment. But what incentive do you have? Like yeah. these these kids want to prove themselves. Yeah. And that means that Garnacho will run himself into the ground, like face face first on the floor. Yeah. Because he wants it. it the most important thing to him is being a good footballer. Mm. And producing moments, whereas that's proving himself. If you could exactly. sum up, if you could sum up how bad United have been in the last ten years and the reasons why, it's probably because they've been spending too much money and giving bad contracts out. And you can't shift these players a lot of the time. Totally, and and and, and like we said about Garnacho only a couple of weeks ago, and again when I we, we spoke actually in the last show about the thing I said about Garnacho and Ronaldo and a position and what they play and what they do. One thing is absolutely sure with Garnacho is when he said the other day when when he was in the game he you know, helped United win the game. He was like, "We want to be in the Champions League next year," and that that might not be all of them, but it's certainly that core those young players. They want to be there. They want to prove themselves. Garnacho wants to be in the Champions League next year, so he's going to put everything out there. And do you know what? He, he might make mistakes, Scott. He might not have great games every week, but he gives it, and that's all I'm really concerned about. Especially when you're a team like Man United, where where the world is changing. Like we've got new part owners. We've got a manager who's only been at the club like 18 months. You're still Things are still changing. So while that's the case, Scott, they've got to work. Yeah, these lads have got to work. And that is still a problem. I still think that, you know, today some of the pressing was good and then the pressing disappeared and you're like, oh. And, and I think that's something and that's tactical. I think you can change some of the tactics to make that work. But this is, I think, the key now is to get into next season is that, that's what the transfer window has to be about next summer is to be able to bring in hungry players. Cause I just think we've, we've had a, a period here of, of many years of overinflated players with overinflated egos who believe that they are better than they show every week. And it's as simple as that, you know, it's as simple as that is that we've got players, I think who have got ceilings, but quite often they just think they're better. And then they go up against a team and they get a woe bead in the last moment against Fulham, you know, something like that. It shouldn't happen. So there's a lot of that and there's a lot of change to come. But yeah, and there's other players, Scott, who I think have proved themselves. Like you mentioned Harry Maguire. You know, Harry Maguire looks like someone's been feeding him something. I don't know. Because he, he, the motivation has gone through the roof from looking very, like, hesitant last season. He's come back into the team this year after being told he's not wanted anymore. Like, literally told, we want you to leave. And he's possessed. <laughs> you can see, is he playing at a higher standard and holding himself to a higher standard. Guess what, Scott? A lot of those boys need to do that. A lot of the players out there need to hold themselves to a higher standard than they do. And then maybe their manager won't get sacked. You know, this kind of comes down to a lot of basic stuff at the end of the day. Harry Maguire, just, you know, an example of how to react to... Totally. Not being in a manager's plans and how to... that That is attitude that... You know how much he's been mocked over the past few years. And to have to deal with that, to deal with everything that happened with him when he was on holiday as well, having to, you know, be when being the most expensive defender in the world for a lot for a while, that was a moniker United put on him that he wasn't Mm. worthy of, you know. Um, no, and he uh, he had a good first season, I think he he was good for a little while under Solskjaer. And obviously, not it wasn't in Ten Hag's plans. Got off, got the offer to go to West Ham, rejected mm. it, or couldn't find an agreement with United. And the way he has reacted 
has been really admirable. A lot of players could learn from him. But this isn't a day I don't I don't think. I know that United were bad for a, a large period of the game, the, the 90 minutes. This isn't really a day to dig into players. Let's talk about good things. Yeah. Um, Harry Maguire, good. Let's, let's do Cobby briefly, just because mm. um, there's a video circling of him dribbling past three Liverpool players. <laughs> we'll remember yeah. it for a very long time. Yeah, I mean... The moment. Like, what, a, what a prospect this kid is. Honestly, he he's just like I, I try my best not to repeat things that we've constantly said or we've said several times or whatnot in the past because I don't I mean, you know obviously there's lots of probably new people watching the show here today after that that game of picked the game up on the picked the show up on social media and on YouTube, but you see in real time what this boy's got and that he slows the game down in his head. He never looks rushed. And when he gets the ball, sometimes, Scott, I'm thinking to myself, move it on, move it on, quick, 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 be quicker with it, move it. And he holds it, and he just wanders into the space, and then he moves it, and you think, actually, he knows what he's doing. I don't need to th think for him, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't need to, but I think that half the time about his other midfield partners, and that's part of the problem, is that you look at the senior players, and half the time you're saying, like, don't do that, stop doing that, please don't do that. We copy, it's the opposite. It's like, yeah, do more of that, that's really good. And I just think as well, you know, he's a local lad, he's from Stockport, He's he's got it all in front of him. He is the guy you build the midfield round. You're lucky you've already got that first midfield piece, Scott. Like, forget when we talk about Rashi or Bruno, and as you said, we don't want to be negative today. But you have got some of these pieces already, and and there's no doubt for me that Cobby's one of them. Cobby is the guy that you build this midfield round for a decade, and that's a great start. You know, you're lucky that you've actually got him. Oh, you have got some pictures up here, Scott. Yeah, I just thought I'd. Uh... I'd share a, a picture for the benefit of the YouTube audience. This is a picture from Kobe Menu's uh, accounts, social media oh, accounts. Look at a that. Picture. If you're listening on audio later, sorry, but this is probably the picture that you've already seen. Uh, Kobe Menu, Ahmad, uh, Willy Cambuala, and uh, Garnacho. What's that? Bless them, our kids. Yes, uh, with a Man of the Match award for Ahmad and the lads at the bottom holding up Ahmad's shirt. That is, uh, yeah. that's lovely. And we're talking about, Ahmed's got some, you know, same threads as me on there. Yes, There's indeed. Long roses. Yes, indeed. And we're talking about like having, you know, something to believe in players mm. who, young players who, you know, really want it, want to prove themselves. And that's a nice little picture, isn't it? Really nice, nice. and uh, and and it shows their feeling. It's got like I, again, I, I I don't you know we we know there's divides in the United squad, and we've talked about them a lot, and everyone's got their own agendas at the end of the day. But I think that core of young players do feel it in terms of being like a little click. You know, there's kind of like five, six, seven of them who have come through at this kind of same time in the kind of two year gap, and they're all like, we're hungry, we want to play, we want to show that we we can hang at the Premier League level. We've done shows, haven't we, about Ahmad? And like we've said, you know, Ahmad, I remember you said to me, you like, you know, is he good enough? Well, not, today doesn't prove he's good enough, but what it does prove is that he is a footballer. It proves that if you, someone else you doubt who plays in this position, maybe we should rotate that and give it a go just to see, just to have a look. And today, you you know, you've got to try and do something so Ahmad comes on the pitch. But I think, I think he earned that today, that 30 minutes, that 40 minute spell that he played in. He did work and and he pushed and he believed that he could go and be the match winner in that moment, Scott. I think there's a few of them out there that don't believe that, don't believe in United in that way. They don't believe they can go and be the match winner and they, they can't carry it on their shoulders. But I do think the young players are the opposite. I think they think that that they could be a, a cornerstone in kind of the future history of Manchester United. And all power to it. I want more of it. I want more of the young players. I'd rather lose with young players than constantly every week we're talking about inflated 30 year olds 28 year olds who do the same rubbish every week and have the same problems so I'm, I, my phone's buzzing we got um Jurgen Klopp's losing his mind apparently oh is he uh, what's we'll, it we'll get in, we'll get people in the comments in tell us what's going on yeah I, I can't watch the video um but you can watch it can we live you can watch it if you want and we can hear it in the background this is all live this is this is this is real live <laughs> um let's see What's Jürgen Klopp saying? I bet Jürgen Klopp is saying... Oh. Normally, intensity is the name of your game, so how come it 
Put it up to your mic, Scott. It is. A bit of a dumb question, I feel say, because when you see us at all, you can if you never saw us, and you can ask how can they have more resources. Um, we played, I don't know how many games recently, I don't know how many games United exactly played that sport. Yeah. I'm really disappointed about that question, but you thought obviously it's good. So too many games, so oh, I don't think that. Oh, come on, we are obviously not in a great shape, and I have no nerves for you. Wow. Well, look, Jürgen. Anyway, I'm not sure if we're allowed to do that, but... <laughs> I don't know. I think, did we break any copyright rules? I'm not quite sure there. Uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? I don't think anyone cares about that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 ultimately, uh, I, I think, uh, I think Jürgen, you know, you've always got the next FA Cup match. You just look forward to that. That's it. That's all I'll say to you. Um, okay. Oh, he's right. got any, is he? That's why he's upset. Oh, no. Poor Jürgen. I feel sorry for him. Look, his team today, let's be honest, I've watched Liverpool every game this season pretty much for work and, and kind of looked at the numbers. They were a bit off today for their standard. And they're they did in play a... Thursday night, like, to be fair. Like, they, they, they played did play Thursday, Thursday night. And, and there's, I knew I knew that was going to be a thing. I thought if United won this game, people were going to say, oh, they played Thursday night. And it's true. They did play Thursday night. So what? Like, you, you still got to find a way at the end of the day. And I think Liverpool could have found a way today if they had kind of manage their own faculties a little bit more. So that's on Klopp. You know, again, that's when, when Liverpool do well, we, we lord people like Klopp and Guardiola, don't we? Well, when your team doesn't do so well, you're also going to carry some of that. And I think today, Liverpool didn't manage the game very well, especially from the moment United brought the game back to two all. I think they were the team looking almost a bit like they wanted penalties for a bit. You know, in United were the team going, right, we're at home. We're going to go with the crowd and try and win the football match. I tell you what, um, Elite Baller in the comments has been uh, doing my job for me, telling people to subscribe if they haven't already. Really appreciate yeah. that. Make sure to hit the like button and support the channel, Elite Baller says. Thank you very much for Thank you, doing Elite that for us. We have also a tweet, uh, a message from Andy Moore. Hmm. Cobby, Harry, Scott and Diogo played well for the shirt. Garnacho as well. Uh, hmm. you know, Diogo Dallo as well. I thought he was quite good today. Um, Aaron Wan Bissaka, we need to Aaron do Wan some Bissaka. We we did we did say Brick play him at left back. Let, we'll wrap up soon, Rob. I think we, you know, I'm I'm out I'm out of energy. But <laughs> we did say play him at left back, and he did play at left back. And I think overall he did a really good job on Salah. Like really really good job on on the on the channel. Salah Rob is obviously involved in the the goal later on the second goal, but. I still think that Wan Bissaka in uh, coming back. You got to remember he's not played any games at all. His fitness levels must be on the floor still. He came in, he did a job, and I even thought he inverted really well. Scott, he got the ball when he was coming in infield with it. I think he could play at left back. I really do. I think, like especially now, we think about what is going on with Luke Shaw and how long you've got Luke Shaw out of the team. Like you might be back soon. You to say there as well about um, Martinez coming back. Yeah, I think he's due Bre due back for the Brentford game. Yeah, so like you got Martin is coming back, so you, you then suddenly get a little bit more assurance. So like, I do think that Lindelof is, is still a problem. He was a problem today. I don't know, saw two or three times where people run at him and he just almost looks like he's going to fall over or whatever. And you're a bit like, oh, that must be hard for his teammates to watch. Um, but yeah, I I, I like Wambasaka playing in those positions, and I think Wambasaka and Delo is a better balance. I think they balance quite well. You know, we're both right backs essentially, but they can both play left back. And I do think they are um, Saka can take on a, a Salah and kind of look after the space quite well. I thought he did, I think he did the job really well today. I was really pleased with his performance. Right, Rob, we'll, um, we'll have to wrap it up soon, I think, because Scott's tired. Go I'm tired. I've got to go and eat. It's nearly eight o'clock, um, 20 to eight. As we record this, got to upload the the podcast as well to the audio channels, which you can find on Apple and Spotify. You can subscribe to this channel as well on YouTube, the Promise Under Monday Night Podcast. Like the video, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you haven't missed a show as well, and follow us on the socials at double underscore Scott Saunders at underscore Rob underscore B and at TPLMUFC on X as well. But Rob, last section. Sum it up. You'll remember where you were when people say two in years to come, Man United 4, Liverpool 3. 
you'll remember where you were because that's what these moments are. They stick with you for life and you go, oh, wow, I was doing this, that, the other. And it just, it stays here and you'll tell the story a thousand times to people in the future about that moment when Ahmad scored that goal. Can you ma imagine, Scott, if Ahmad has a proper career at Man United now, you know, this will be the day people believe it will have started. This is his first moment. What did someone say to me the other day? Ahmad's done nothing in the United shirt. Well, guess what? He has now. He has indeed. He has indeed. Man United have beaten Liverpool 4-3 in the FA Cup in one of an it was an all-time classic. I think that one you will remember for a long, long time. Uh United pulling it out of the bag when you didn't really think that they would. Uh, but mm. they managed to progress. They played Coventry in the FA Cup semi-final. Man City played Chelsea in the other game. Wouldn't it be nice if it was a Man United versus Chelsea FA Cup final? Two two Massive spending, flopping teams play, competing for one of the most famous prizes in football. Two billion pound squads versus each other. And uh, and hopefully uh, Cole Palmer not going against a team that he loves, Man United. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Like, I, I, there's a little bit of sadistic side in me. I quite like to play City. Just go and play City and just and, and take it away from them at Wembley. Like there's there's that little bit of me, but I'm not you know, realistically that's not that's not something I should be thinking about. But it was the same as today. Like there was something about I, before the game I tweeted as well. I was like, I'd really like us to kind of say to you and Clot, it was your last FA Cup game. Sorry, mate. It's your last one we beat you. But to beat them like that. He's wow. in a bit of a mood now. Uh, Jurgen. He's going yeah. to be in a bit of a mood, isn't he? And let, let's, you know, if they have, if their season collapses for whatever reason now, my people might look at this game and say, oh, that was the game where it kind of, the heart fell out of their their challenge. I don't believe that. I still think they're good enough. And uh, yeah, I think you saw today with Liverpool is that they are a little bit fa fallible, Scott. There's, there are there's bits in their game. They're, they're not the perfect I've been, I've been saying that all season. Yeah, I've been saying that. And and and, and they're, they're, not, they're not a City's level. And I don't think they're at Arsenal's level either. I think they're both, those two teams are above Liverpool. But Liverpool have done really well to station themselves kind of somewhere at the top of the conversation. And their running looks good. So you think, oh, well, they might, you know, might do it. But it, do you know what for Liverpool is really important, Scott, is that they keep Salah fit and that he scores lots of goals, then you've got a really good chance of winning the title and winning trophies and going forward. But so today, With Salah, respect, Rob, nobody, nobody cares about Liverpool. No one cares about <laughs> them, but if you keep Salah quiet, like I think we, we kept yeah. him relatively quiet today. That maybe is a difference. Scored, you get... but, you know. yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't, it, it, that was a horrible goal, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, that's, that's anyway, like, let's, that's let's do, let's do final question. Uh, Elite Go Baller on. says, question for the panel. What did you do when Ahmad scored that goal? What did I do? I let out a, a, an almighty scream and I kind of like got up and ran around the sofa. Um, I don't remember I, uh, actually celebrating the other three goals, right? The first goal went in and I was like, oh, here we go again. It's like Marcus scoring against City. One nil up early in the game and I was like, I don't want to be one nil up at 10 minutes. That's not, it's, it's going to hurt us. And it was 2 1 and I was thinking, oh, we're probably going to lose. And then when you think, when you get, when Anthony scored, I was just a bit dumbfounded. I was a bit like, oh my God, he scored and that means extra time. How, how have we got here? Because it really felt like I was going to do this show and have to go for a load of rubbish about why the team was bad. But the goal, the winning goal, just lost my mind. Because that's what you do. You get up in the air and you're screaming and, you know, hugging my sons and like, it's like tears and you're like, ah, and that is the moment and that is why we do this. You know, because there's always those special moments that you remember. And I know my boys, you know, my kids will remember this for forevermore. It's, it is, that's what football is. That's why football is special. That's why sport is special. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those things we support these teams through hell and high water. So, yeah, what were you lot doing? Tell us on Twitter when we obviously finished the show. Tell us how you celebrated and how you felt in those moments because it's a special day. You're allowed to celebrate it. Yeah, that's it from us, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, follow us on the socials one more time at double underscore Scott Saunders, at underscore Rob underscore B, and at TPL MUFC on X. Right, we'll be back soon. I'm going to go eat and get my breath back. And, uh, God, blind me. I might watch the game again, Scott. Yeah, me too. I'm going to seek out every single highlight I can possibly find. Now I might do all two hours.
just do it, you know, do it all two hours straight. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. <laughs> like we know what happens now, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> it's a good ending. Want. <laughs> right thanks everyone see you next time thanks for joining us please leave a comment below and we'll see you soon for another promise land podcast